via telephone, the uh, president of the Jefferson County Commission, Steve Stolfer. Steve, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate you being with us today. It's uh, it's a big Jefferson County day here, too, because I've got Jefferson County prosecuting attorney Matt Harvey in studio. So, Steve, I hope that makes you feel more comfortable. Yes. It, you all must have picked from the bottom of the barrel today. You have Matt and I on here. <laughs> no, I like to think of it as skimming the cream from the top, baby. Okay. We'll, we'll take that angle. I like that better. On June the 5th, the Planning Commission in Jefferson County is hosting the first public input session at Jefferson High School in the cafeteria from 7 to 9 on the upcoming comprehensive plan for Jefferson County. And again, this will go from 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock. The public is invited to give their voice, uh, have it heard for the upcoming 2045 comprehensive plan update. Steve, when was the last time the comprehensive plan was updated in Jefferson County? It was uh, roughly 10 years ago. Um, it's required by state code that we we uh, update our comprehensive plan every 10 years. And that just doesn't include Jefferson County. That includes all your municipalities and, and every county in the state. So it was done around 2012, 2013, somewhere around there or shortly after? It, it was it was shortly after that. I think I do believe it got complete. It was completed roughly around 2015, 2014, 2015. But it's it's about a two-year process, almost a two-year process to complete the comp plan and, and to receive input. And, and what is it that uh, you're looking to get out of a comprehensive plan specifically? Well, the a comprehensive plan basically is a business plan for the county for the next 10 years, uh, more or less a, a, a wish list uh, as well. We want to see what direction the county wants to grow in, whether we need more parks, Rather, we, we need more um, um, affordable housing, uh, rather we need more jobs, more, you know, or, or what type of jobs for that matter, is, is pretty much what's all in this uh, probably 100-page document when it's finished. And would this include the goals of the municipalities within Jefferson County or just the county outside the city's proper? We are only responsible for writing the comprehensive plan for the county and inside the, the county. The municipalities will also have their own uh, comprehensive plan. We will and have received comments from the municipalities that we will take their comments in uh, and, and participate with them because obviously they sit inside the county boundary. What sorts of things were in the last comprehensive plan that were done in terms of what needs Jefferson County might think about and might have thought about in 2012 2013 around there for the future well that was uh um there was there's a lot of there, there were a lot of um folks that felt like we needed to streamline a few things make things uh cut some red tape out make things a little bit easier to accomplish um there has been some talks about the how we do clustering um type of uh rural subdivisions um there has been some, there was some talks about parks and rec and believe it or not there was actually uh some comments about uh renewable energy and something that was talked about in the last comprehensive plan that actually jefferson county's moving forward with that hadn't has moved forward with for with approving some solar farms yeah i've seen those as i've driven through on occasion too uh do you anticipate more of those in jefferson county under this next comprehensive plan I assume it'll. I'm. A, I'm. A, I will assume that there will be a section in there for renewable energies. Energy. I don't know exactly what the language will look like because we're just now starting the comprehensive plan. We have a long way to go yet. We go to Matt Harvey with the first uh, round of questions here, Matt. Uh, Commissioner Stolver, good morning. Good and morning. I will ask you what does it does the comprehensive plan uh, for the listeners does it have a legal effect? No, it, and that's why I threw in there. It's kind of a kind of a wish list for the most part uh, of what we kind of want to to see happen in the county, and then obviously the wish list has to be uh, has would have to go. Say if you wanted, um, I don't know. Say if you wanted more parks along, I'm just going to pick a route Route Nine um, because there's better access off off the highway. I'm just making this up here. 
um, then it would have to actually go and have to go into effect. They would have to go out and find property, um, take it in, and, and and then buy it and move forward. It's sort of a sort of a wish list, but it does not really have a lot of legal effect except for the um, future land use map. The future land use map is determined on how, is determined how we rezone properties in Jefferson County. Um, and when we rezone properties, they have to be or should be. Uh, in conformance with the comprehensive plan. So this, so th- I think this sh- highlights the importance of the community being being involved because it, it does make a difference. It uh, that their their opinions and wants will be considered and have an impact on the county. Um, what uh, besides citizen input? It, it, what other input will the county commission review uh, in formulating the comprehensive plan? Well, we, we will take citizens' input. That's the most important part right now, um, to take the citizens' input and what they want. The, uh, the committee that has stepped up to, to take on this plan is the Planning Commission. Um, they will draft this plan, and then once it's drafted it, and approved at the Planning Commission level, it will then go, it will have, a, will have a public hearing. Um, it will have, citizens will have an opportunity to comment on the draft, and at that time, it'll be forwarded to the county commission. The county commission will also have a public hearing, and then this plan will be voted on. So there's several steps along the way to have input um, with stakeholders and citizens uh, within the county. So there isn't any info, uh, studies that's being conducted? Yes. Um, our planner, Luke, he is he has uh, is collecting a lot of data uh, through his work. He's pulling in the um, pop- population trends in Jefferson County. He's pulling in um, all, all sorts of data from our schools, uh, from our roads, our, uh, you know, our um, road counts, uh, traffic counts, I should say, and trying to determine, um, you know, he's, he's putting all this data together for us to, to have the, to make these decisions on what we want this comprehensive plan to look like. Uh, for example, like the uh, school system, Although we are increasing in population in Jefferson County, we grow about 0.8 percent a year over a 10-year census. Our um, it was kind of interesting to see our our student enrollment has been declining um, for various reasons. However, we're going through a little bit bit of a boom right now, so it's something we're going to have to take uh, into account to see if our enrollment will increase next year or decrease. We don't know yet, but he's taking he's taking into all these into account with. All the data, everything he's collecting, he's he pretty much this is his job to do and to put together the comprehensive plan uh, for the community. John Gilstrap, anytime you plan beyond next month, right? You're taking a risk that the, the plan is going to come apart. And planning out 10 years, it seems to me, is a monumental task and largely a roll of the dice. So with the rapid evolution of technology and everything else, the stuff is going to exist in 10 years that we don't even consider to exist these days. So is there an amendment process? It, it's the, the comprehensive plan is made every 10 years, but is there an amendment process if the the pathway clearly is veering into the wrong direction? Yes, um, you. We do have the ability ability to amend the comprehensive plan. Um, that was that actually what took place about um, home, don't hold me to this about two years ago, um, and even back in ten years ago, or I say eight years ago when it was completed. We didn't take into uh, account that the south end of the county, or excuse me, the, the north end of the county actually had gas. So they didn't have, at the time, they didn't have utilities out to the north end of the county. And the north north end where I'm pointing to is around the Rockwell site. Now, now that area of the county has gas, water, sewer, and obviously electric. So uh, we had a recent rezoning for that area. Um, it it certainly did not show it on the um, the future land use map that it, it should have been or could have been rezoned. But with the economic changes to to that area, the planning commission, I, think, I believe it was unanimous vote, approved the rezoning because of the changes um, from 
um, for bringing in utilities where it didn't have it when the plan was completed back in 15. And is there any input from, say, Berkeley County, where you share a border um, in the Jefferson County plan, which would obvi- obviously affect the residents of, of Berkeley County? Um, we have never taken um, participated with Berkeley County before that, that I'm aware about. Um, I'm sure if there's something they want to share with us, we will certainly uh, um, listen. Um, but most mostly who we are talking to as far as other uh, municipalities is Charlestown, Ranson, Bolivar, Harpersfield, and Shepherdstown. Steve Stolifer is our guest here on the program. He's the president of the Jefferson County Commission. And coming up, they're going to be asking for public input, uh, the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, and uh, that'll be at Jefferson High School from 7 to 9 p.m. on June the 5th. And again, that's June the 5th, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, Steve, will all the commissioners be present for that? Uh, I can't speak for them, but I, I will be there. Um, I'm, I'm assuming if, if they're free, they will be there. I, I don't. I can't speak for them, but it's a very important meeting to be at. I had a friend uh, a few years ago who was uh, the uh, elected to the Frederick County Commission in Maryland. And when I would talk to him about certain things involving Frederick County, he would often uh, draw a comparison to another county in Maryland that was of similar size and uh, had a lot of the same kind of uh, demographic statistics and, and such and whatever. Is there another county in West Virginia that Jefferson County compares to? Um, well, we are a growth county, so we, we can uh, share a lot of our, our growing teams is with Berkeley County. Um, however, Jefferson County is unique in its own. We're only one of just a handful of counties that have zoning. So that, that makes a big difference. That's a great point. And when it comes to zoning, when you're doing a comprehensive plan, I would suspect that that would also give you more control over the comprehensive plan in terms of where growth will take place, correct? That That is taken into consideration because we we have went to a traditional zoning process where before, and I'm going back maybe 10 years ago, we used to have a lease uh, process, a, a point process on how you would rezone your property. Do you like the way the subdivisions have been laid out in in uh, Jefferson County, Steve? And as you plan for growth, do you see subdivisions sort of kind of like a the, you know a, a spoke effect going by another nearby subdivisions, or do you see them popping up in areas right now which are more agricultural? No, um, unlike uh, I'll use Berkeley County for example. Um, years ago, Berkeley County ran uh, utilities through. I would say the large uh, majority of the county. Jefferson County has not done that. Our utilities are pretty much uh, close in uh, to the uh, in proximity to the municipalities. Therefore, you're not going to see a lot of um, high density subdivisions popping up in the more rural district. You might see, obviously, you can build a house in a rural district uh, on an acre lot. Uh, but you're not going to see the type of high density that you see, say, in Berkeley County in, in a more rural a rural setting. That's a very good distinction. I appreciate you pointing that out. Do you see the, uh, natural gas being more prolific in the county as you look at that uh, comprehensive plan going forward? Yes, natural gas is very important. Um, as you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's at the Rockwell site now. We would love to get natural gas into the Burr Industrial Park and then have it have it extend on to Charlestown. I think it would be uh, a, it, it would be great to have. There's obviously issues with natural gas. I, I'm understand I'm understanding there's a supply issue right now. Um, you know, natural gas uh, average is about about a million dollars a mile to run a pipe. It's expensive, so you you almost need a, a, an end user or something at the end of the line that can help pay for, for a um, project like that. Would that cost preclude it from being something that's a reasonable residential option in the near future? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think a residential option would um, kind of fit the bill to, to run a line get it, to get it to town. I think we would have to have maybe a, a, a large user um, that, that obviously larger than a uh, residential development that, that 
would use a lot of gas to make it worthwhile to run the line. You mentioned Rockwell a couple of times in regards to some expansion business-wise and where Rockwell located. And obviously, most people listening or watching the show right now are very familiar with the history of how that recruitment went and then what happened after it was announced and before Rockwell got up and running. Most of that seems to have died down now. You see a sign here or there uh, that still kind of brings you back to those times. But in general, in regards to attracting corporate business in Jefferson County, how do you see that model playing out, Steve? You have municipalities, which have their own plans, obviously, but uh, certainly Jefferson County has a lot of land and a lot of it right now is not developed. How will the comprehensive plan to ad- uh, address that? I, I think if, if you look at the old comprehensive plan and how um, they designated commercial and industrial areas, I think you'll see um, that the, the, the new comp plan will do the same and have designated areas for industrial growth. Um, so you'll most likely see this area around, um, I'm, I'm going to assume, around the Burr Industrial Park and areas on, on that end of the county um, makes sense because our utilities, that's the closest spot for um, any type of large warehouse. Um, it just kind of fits the bill there. It's flat ground, um, and we're close to utilities. Um, so I, I believe it will definitely be – I know it will definitely be addressed, and, and most of your commercial uh, areas will be along your major thoroughfares. So it will be Route 9 and 340 uh, and, and, and some parts of 51. Um but all these things will be addressed, and, and we'll have this uh, very colorful map completed by the end of this uh, um, comp plan for the future land use areas where we see the growth going and what type of growth it could be, whether it's commercial, light industrial, or, or industrial. How's your water supply going forward, Steve? So far, so good. Um, we uh, uh, we pull water um, from, well... Uh, CTUP pulls water from the uh, Shenandoah. I, I do know there's some water issues in, in other parts of the state where supply could be uh, um, low, but right now we certainly do not have a water issue in Jefferson County. That's where um, CTUP pulls from. Obviously, we have a system in Shepherdstown, or Shepherdstown has a system where they're pulling from the Potomac, and then Harpers Ferry also is pulling. We're, so we're mainly pulling from the rivers. Matt Harvey. Commissioner. The, the Rockwell plant is is technically in Ranson. Um, do you? It, it, how does that factor into when you're when you're uh, configuring the comprehensive plan that you have these municipalities? Is there consideration given for that? That's a really good question. Um, obviously, uh, where you have industrial growth is sort of where you want to keep your industrial growth at. So yes. Uh, so any any property that's owned um, uh, or, or in the municipalities that's currently an industrial site, we would we would certainly see. I would certainly see the the next property, adjacent property, could be potentially uh, industrial as well. Um, something um, people may not know: the um, um, folks that own the Rockwell site, they actually rezone the property next door. It's in the county, so it's kind of out there around the Rockwell area. It's uh, you don't know whether you're a county or, or, or city. It's uh, it's kind of confusing a little bit. Um, we had a, a, a run of annexations back in the day, about I'm going back maybe 15 years ago, when the county was uh, anti-business. A lot of the municipalities were pro-business, and they annexed a lot of ground um, outside their their, their 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 downtown area, and um, that's how we have these these large um, tracts of land out in. What people think is in the county, but they're actually in the city limits. Can I? Um, it, will this be the only the June fifth? Will that be the only opportunity for the public to have input into the the plan? No, no, sir. We will have multiple times uh, for for the public to um, have input. Um, we're going to have a uh, booth at the county fair. People can stop by that and and provide input. We will have other meetings. The reason that we Pick Jefferson High School because we wanted a place that was large enough because we're not we don't we don't really know what type of uh, or how big our crowd's going to be, and we wanted a place that was more central in the county. So we thought Jefferson High School was the best pick for this location. John, any final questions for Steve? Yeah, I'm curious. A 10-year plan by definition means changes are coming, and people in general don't like change. So as you 
as you prepare for pushback, not to concentrate on the negative, but as you prepare for pushback, where do you expect it most? Is it in the development of new residential areas or in the development of more industrial business areas? Uh, you brought up a very good question. Uh, we, we'll probably have pushback from both areas. Obviously, um, um, anytime we have any, any type of industrial rezoning, um, first thing people think of is, is uh, smokestacks and, and, and dirty air. Um, whenever we have a residential rezoning, um, people think of traffic and, and just, just a very negative, uh, uh, stuff it could come with or with residential growth. Um, what, what we, what I have seen over many years is a lot of folks move here from the city or the metropolitan area, the rather DC, Baltimore or the Northern Virginia, Maryland area. And they don't want to see any change. Um, so when they're, they they might build or buy a house that was a farm, or was at one time a farm, and then when the, the neighboring property wants to uh, farmer wants to go out of business or retire, they get very upset that their view is not going to be what it was when they bought their um, their house. So we'll hear that. We'll we'll, we'll hear uh, view sheds. Um, People want to have the same view outside their back patio that uh, that they came here uh, when they bought. So we'll, we'll hear some of that. Um, we certainly, I certainly do expect to hear that a lot. And um, um, you know, we we would we will address it when it comes up and 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 try to figure out what's the best solution that with that will maybe help offset some of these issues. It might be some type of uh, heavy screening or or there's there's things we can do to uh, to uh, how do you say. Uh, less than the blow for for the next industrial residential um, development. Don't you just love that scenario, Steve, where you get that, you know, me and my 10,000 neighbors moved out here because we like the wide open spaces. Don't change it now that I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. This actually cuts pretty that. close to home. Well, <laughs> uh, C- Commissioner, what's the, y- y- there's not a lot of public utilities that extend throughout the county, um, as you as you pointed out. So what is the the... The minimum lot size that someone has to have to, to have well and septic. Um, m- minimum lot size. It it all depends on your it, obviously the how how your property will perk. But on average, it's one point one acres that it, that you that would be your minimum lot size for well and septic uh, in the royal dis rural district. Steve, anything else you can tell us about this that our public would need to know right now? I don't think so. I was just uh, planning on coming out June fifth. If you if, if you want to, um, you know, certainly listen. Uh, if you if you want to participate or listen, uh, it's from seven to nine at Jefferson High School. Steve, thanks so much. I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Jefferson County Commission President Steve Stoller at uh, nine thirty two.